traders I am back again with another video and today we're gonna go over just uh, looking at a few pairs that are on the radar things that I'm looking at for possible trading opportunities using the Ichimoku system so we're gonna get right into it we're gonna start off here with the euro yen you're looking at the euro yen on the daily time frame so looking at this euro yen on the daily time frame I'm looking for a long opportunity and there's a couple reasons why I'm looking for a long opportunity but there's a few levels that I'm debating where uh, I may see price um, turn around at so we're looking for a reversal and we had two candles here that looked like this was showing that there were signs of a possible reversal at this key at this uh, Tinkinson level here but currently the candle that just opened today which is Sunday this is the beginning of the trading week I have a candle that's just open and the markets not even open yet so we'll see what happens with this candle but I'm looking for this to hold support here at this level this is the previous week's low it's at 137.979 so this is the previous week's low so I'm looking for that to hold resist hold support there and you also have two candles here that are showing us that there, there's a possible um, reversal at this level but then this candle looks like it's trying to violate that if we close below this previous um, doji here then I'll look for the price to continue down to this level but what I'm looking for this level here is your um, daily Kijinsen level that's going to be a level of strong support and resistance so like it, the market likes to come back to the Kijinsen level and there find support now the market also likes to always come back to not always but it likes to quite often come back to your um, your fractal level so I have a fractal level here that I'm looking at and you could put this little zone here because I like to use the wicks and the bases of the body to make a level so I'm looking at like quite possibly 136 885 and 136 624 for this fractal level so that all lines up pretty much with this Kijinsen this daily Kijinsen the daily Kijinsen is in at about uh, 137 103 so looking at those three levels if we see price violate this previous week's low and this the bottom of this wick of the um, doji here then look for price to continue down to this level which is that fractal support and that doji support then look for a long trade at that area but if not if we don't violate this level and we stay uh, we honor this um, this previous week's low here then you'll see the market bounce off for this previous week's low and continue to the upside so then where would you look for um, tar for your possible target we'll have to go to our four hour time frame because that's where we're going to really look to get into the market now what I like to do I like to put this blue line which is going to be my daily Kijinsen and I'm going to put that on my four hour time frame because I want to see that level and know that's a level where I'm looking really for the market to if the market violates that level then I'm really going to start looking for the market to continue to the downside and then we'll look at the four hour and see what we see on the four hour but I do like the the um, price action I'm getting in this area with the Tinkinson here maybe have a Tinkinson bounce at this level if not then look for the market to continue lower so we go to the four hour time frame when we look at the four hour time frame the four hour time frame tells us a few things now we could look at the four hour and, and see the four hour is bearish but again you're at that level that I talked about that previous week's low which is coming in what's this level coming in at um, 137 979 and when that level looks like it's holding support we could get a bounce off of that level and continue to the upside now with the downside if we violate that level then still we're, that you look for a Kumo breakout because you'll violate this fractal level here you get a Kumo breakout but then if you get to the Kumo breakout you have a lot of support underneath of you because you're gonna see this blue line here which is my daily um, Kijinsen and then I have this fractal zone here which is gonna be a strong support and resistance level so a violation of this cloud a violation of this previous week's low and the cloud doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna have a good Kumo breakout here because a lot of times you can see price continue down to this level and then all of a sudden boom price continues back up it doesn't violate that level and then therefore you don't uh, get a good, a good Kumo breakout and also you need to know where your support and resistance levels are if you're gonna trade a Kumo breakout you may be trading right into support and that's what you would be doing here if you didn't realize these two levels here so you'd be trading right into support which would um, alter your um, Kumo breakout okay but on a four hour time frame everything is pretty much bearish you could see we have a future that's bearish we have a crossover that's bearish we have price inside the cloud so that's neutral and then Chiku span is below the um, price of 26 periods ago but 
we still coming up on this resistance here again so that's going to be a major level that we're going to worry about so I want to see and the very good thing to see and to know that your daily trade is working because we're trading what we see on the daily we want to trade that daily picture because you get the overall picture of the market off of the daily we want to see if this level holds we'd like to see this level hold because this is the level in here where you have that doji so really to not even confuse us we'd really like to see this level hold but if that level doesn't hold then we'd have to wait to see what happens here then we'd look for support here and then a long trade but if this level holds and you want to look to get in a trade just again look for the breakout of the Kumo or violation of this four hour Kijinsen would set your trade up to the long side and continue to the upside so there's a couple areas where you could where you could look for a long trade here just gotta look for um, the entry level the entry to get into the market I never tell traders to set a level right here or set an entry I mean set an entry at this level or set an entry at this level what we need to wait for is, is confirmation that this um, level is holding and for us to take the trade long so therefore we don't just set levels I have a lot of people that tell me well you know Kijin bounces don't work or this and that and they I asked them why and they say because well I set the level and price continued straight through that level and stopped me out for a big loss well yeah definitely that's gonna happen if you're not sure that a level is gonna hold so you need to have confirmation that that level is gonna hold before you jump into a trade alright so it's you don't just set levels and, and think the market may turn at that level because now you're trying to guess the market guess tops and bottoms guess where the markets gonna turn and, and and reverse and that's the bad thing to do that's a way to lose a lot of trades so yeah I had a lot of traders tell me this and I asked them how are they trading that and that's what they tell me and I tell them you, you that's not the way to trade the market alright so we have to look for some, some confirmation and basically I have um, students in Ichimoku course we go over all these entries that we um, have here and how to get into the market but basically I'm showing you the levels that we're looking at and the levels that we're looking to get into the market so just got to get a way to get into the market now I can give a thousand levels of where to get into the market or all kinds of levels but I can tell you where but if you don't know how that's gonna be an issue so just knowing where to get into the market is not good enough you got to you have to know how to get into the market okay and you want to also know how to keep your risk low so you know making your stop loss as tight or as possible and limiting risk on your entry or your trade is going to be a major factor in your trading success okay so that's the euro yen again let me go back to the daily real quick and that daily picture is what I'm looking at here now again if we violate the level like I said then we're gonna look for these levels here once we violate those levels then you can you know we're gonna continue to the downside now I didn't show you what I'm looking for for a target on this trade so if we get the bounce here and we get a market to move we see the market moving higher what I'm gonna look for a target I already have this target level that I'm thinking about right here because this is a support and resistance level so that's gonna be the level that I'm gonna to look to, to take profit or look to get in and out of the market you can see where this was resistance here then the market came through violated that level came bound down it was support support and then a violation so if the market comes back up look for that level to be a good level to take some profit it's gonna be 145 391 a good level to take profit and see if the market or your trade can continue even higher to the upside alright so that's what we're looking at on the euro yen daily time frame breaking it down to the four hour time frame to get your entry but trading what you see on the daily is the big picture alright so let's go on and move off to the we're gonna go to the Euro Aussie now okay so Euro Aussie on the daily time frame we're looking at the daily time frame and again this is the beginning of the open of the market 614 and you can see what's happening here with this candle it's a pretty bearish candle but we're sitting again this pretty much looks like the euro yen so you had that weekly support level here so this is the previous week's low so this is going to come in as a support level at 144.893 so that level is going to be a level of support and you could see also the daily Kijinsen so we're going to put that on our charts also so that daily Kijinsen we want to know where that is because that's going to be a strong level of support 
also all right so what it looks like is the market is attempting to violate that previous week's low if it violates that level then we're going to look for the market to come down to this level here this also lines up with our fractal level again as i told you see the fractal level always comes into play now the market's going to come down bounce off of this level and you continue to see, you'll see the market continue to the upside or the market may honor this level because with this level you have confluence with the Kijinsen, with the tinkinson here and along with the um, previous week's low so we want to see what happens you know don't take for granted that this is going to close as is this market may bounce off at this level and continue to the upside I don't like the distance from the Kijinsen but if the market flattens out here and starts to move higher you'll see the Kijinsen start to move higher the market gets too far from Kijinsen it likes to come back retract get a little closer get back in equilibrium and then start moving higher all right so this is the daily time frame and we're looking at what we're trading the daily time frame looking at the levels that we could get into the market and looking at the overall picture of what the market's doing okay so I'm gonna put some support and resistance here because this is the first resistance level all right so this is one main level and it also pretty much lines up with that previous week's high you can see we had bounce here we had bounces back here lining up with this flat uh, Kumo here so you had a lot of resistance here resistance here even back here you had some resistance so this is a pretty good level of support and resistance basically so if we bounce off of this level here look for the first profit target target to be this level and that level is going to be 147.688 alright so if you bounce here which is the previous week's low at 144.893 and you can get that bounce and you trade that level then you want to look for this level for some profit taken if not if we violate this then we're, we're gonna come down here and then we're still gonna look for this as a profit level this is gonna be our profit target still so a bounce off of either of these levels is gonna get us a good trade to the upside a violation of both of these levels and then everything everything's off the table for us all bets are off and we'll look to see what the market does later we'll re-evaluate because you can see what the market does right in this last area here it doesn't look anything like anything's too stable especially from this point so you can't really count on a good trend running it doesn't look like so far but this is gonna be my first level to take profit and then my second level is gonna be overall if I violate this level and I think if you get a bounce or a bounce anywhere here I think when the market attempts to move higher I believe it will violate this level okay and if we violate that level then I'm looking for the market to continue to this level here overall this level right here pretty much um, 152.284 and then you got this wick up top you can make this a support and resistance zone so it'll be a resistance zone and it'll be 153.337 alright so that's that gonna be that the overall target where we're gonna look to um, take profit okay but we have to see what happens here there's a lot of stuff going on here we need to see this violation or at no, rather not the violation here but we want to see this market hold this level and then continue to the upside if it violates then we look for the same thing here if that violates then I'm off the I'm off the charts with this one I'm not even gonna look to trade it until I see what it's doing more uh, a little bit more detail here because it, it's violating everything that I'm, I'm suspecting to get a trade at so I'll reevaluate my position then alright so that's um, Euro Aussie on the daily time frame here let's look at the four hour really quick alright so four hour overall we looked at our daily so we know what we're looking at so again this is a pretty good trade opportunity again but you see here we have to wait to see what this candle closes as it's a three hour three hours before this candle closes and it just cl start open and look how strong the move is to the downside so if we violate this level here then we're gonna still look to get to this level here for a trade now looking at the four hour uh, the four hour uh, time frame here we have a few opportunities here now I also like to look at these fractal levels now that daily doesn't line up with this four hour this four hour fractal level is right here so this is gonna be a strong level of support and resistance also and it's also gonna be a fractal zone I'm gonna put that on my chart this is gonna be a fractal zone okay so with that fractal zone you may see price hold in this area so there's a lot of resistance I mean a lot of support underneath of us even if we get a violation again with the cloud so a Kumo breakout to the downside still doesn't seem very safe until you violate these levels here so you can see these levels 143 409 that's gonna be my daily um, Kijinsen level that's gonna be strong support there then you have this level 143 953 which is gonna be that fractal 
along with the upper level of the fractal at just about 144,551. Is that pretty much close to where price is now? So if price bounces off of here and then closes above this level here, this is our previous week's low, then you can see you'll see this level held as support. All right, and you can see the fractals here, and this is a support level anyway. So if this level holds, then we'll look for the market to bounce at this level and continue the upside. So if you stay on your four hour chart, look at the upside, you'll see the Kumo breakout. Now, the Kumo breakout will be invalid on the four hour, but basically, we're trading what we see on the daily. So if we trade that daily time frame market structure, then we're going to continue to the upside. We just need to see where do we want to get into the market. So the best thing to look for is to see if this price holds at this level and take the upside break of the Kumo. And that'll let you know that your bias has changed. You take that upside breakout. Now your four hour won't be in line with the breakout, but your daily is in line with what you, what you want to do. Your daily is in line for a long trade. Okay, based off of the market structure of the daily time frame. So that's what we're looking at. We're trading that market structure of the daily time frame. Let's go back to the four hour really quick. Okay, back and forth. But I trade the daily buy. I trade what I see the daily structure, but I try to catch it different on the four hour. The four hour may show me something totally different. And then you have to decide when do you listen to the four hour? When do you listen to the daily? Okay, overall, I listen to what that daily is trying to tell me. But I try to get a better trade off of that four hour. Now, the four hour may totally violate all of this and continue to the downside. Well, definitely, I want to take that Kumo breakout. If it violates this level and I can get a good trade, I'll trade that all the way back down to this level here, or at least looking here for the first level of support, which is going to be about uh, 142, 429, and then finally go down to this zone here. This was a zone where price was in a range, and then this is the top of that range. This is prior. We could see that on the um, we'll see that on the daily time frame. This was a strong support and resistance level. The market was bouncing between this level and this level here. I took this level off the chart, but it was down here. The market bounced between that level here and then violated, came back, bounced on this level, and then came back, bounced again, and then finally went to the upside here. So you got a lot of support and resistance at this level here if the market violates that cloud on the four hour time frame. All right. So the new daily candle just opened up here. All right. So let's go back to our four hour. And the market's open now, so everything is real. So everything is now real. And still need to wait and see what's going on here. You could see what may happen here is this support level may hold. But we want to be sure. So. We'll take our time here, look at this trade, see what happens at these levels, then we'll decide what we need to do, right? All right, so that's the Euro Aussie. Now we're going to go to the pound US dollar time, um, the pound US dollar. Let's go to the pound US dollar. And we're going to start off on the daily time frame, take that to the daily. So pound US dollar on the daily. I earlier set up a trade with this pair, but I'm looking to see this pull back a little now. If it doesn't pull back, then I'm really not going to take a big deal of this trade. What I looked at on the four hour time frame, look, it looks like um, you had a bounce here at the Kijin Sen where price is holding true, but you have a TK crossover that's bearish. So we have some mixed signals here on the daily time frame. And what I looked at on the four hour time frame, though, when I traded this four hour time frame, Okay, I, I had an entry order set above this level right here. So we had an entry right here. Actually, the entry was above this level, so it was right here. We entered the market here, and then the market dropped, and then continued a little higher. We got out of the market as we hit this level. Came down Friday, then when the market was closing up, there was big news for Friday. So we didn't want to be sitting in that trade. And took the little profit, but the market's moving back down. The market looks like it's coming back to one of our levels where we may get a bounce and, a, and able to trade this long again to the upside, or it may start to just sit in the range. So a lot of times you'll see it just sit in this range here, and it's pretty much it was pretty much doing that. You could call this the range level, not minus the wicks. I'm not even including the wicks, just including the bodies. This was the range level here. We violated and now it looks like we came back to the top of that range level, maybe bounce off of that level and continue higher. Okay, so the high probability trade will be definitely high probability, but low, um, higher risk will be a violation of this level to the upside. 
all right but you're going to risk more because based off of where you're going to have to put your stop losses now your stop loss could be a few places it could be the bottom of this level here which is awfully tight depending on how you violate that level this is the previous week's high that's at 155.981 then you're going to use this level. You can use this level because this was a support and resistance level of the cloud here. And that level, uh, not the cloud, sorry, of this range here, this small range. And that level is 155.377. And then finally, you're going to use this bottom fractal or your Kijinsen. So you could see those on your chart and, and do those yourself if you trade in Ichimoku. All right, but overall it looks like this if you could get a bounce here if this doesn't continue to the downside you get a bounce at this level and the market continues higher now if it violates and comes back inside here then maybe we find support down at this level and the market continue to the upside all right so really the pound dollar uh, I already was in this trade I need to wait now and, and make sure what's going on here you need to see if one of these levels is going to hold support so not much to talk about right here yet but there is an opportunity we just need to be sure and just wait here so patience is a big thing that I've learned anymore so I've been trading for a little while here and learning a lot of patience is one of the things that I've developed prior to how I used to trade <laughs> all right so that's the pound dollar and now we're looking at the euro pound what well, let's go to the euro pound look at the euro pound on the start off with the daily time frame euro pound daily time frame all right so we can already see what happened the market gap down a little bit all right and this is the um, four hour time this is the daily time frame right now that we're looking at so looking at the euro pound on the daily time frame you can see we gapped down on this pair because you closed um friday here and now we're, we're opening up right down here so we gapped down quite a bit all right but we still look at this level this is the previous week's low and it looks like this level is going to hold that support here so if this previous week's level holds that support the market will continue higher so this will be basically a move to the upside a little bit of range here and then back down then maybe moving higher but we again have to make sure this level is going to hold so we go to the four hour to try to get into our trade but now everything does look a little bearish on this daily okay so it's hard to really call this in plus everything is flat so Ichimoku is not good in this kind of a situation you can see everything's flat here basically because we are in a we were in a, a range here you had a crossover here then another crossover and it looks like you're getting ready to have another crossover we want to see more of this and less of this so Ichimoku doesn't do well in this kind of a, a, of a um, market so this is going to give us a little trouble here so you go to the four hour time frame see what you got on the four hour time frame now we can trade this four hour time frame based off of what we see here pretty well okay because the first thing that I notice is that we have we did have a breakout then a pullback pull back to this Tinkinson here it didn't violate the Tinkinson so the market didn't continue to the upside and then now it honored that level and violating this Kumo here we just had a Kumo breakout here because this level closed and this one opened up below the cloud so we have a Kumo breakout here but we're at a support level at uh, what's it 71,962 that's the previous week's low so you have to be careful of that plus you can see how flat your Tinkinson is your Kijinsen is that's telling you that the market was ranging here so you could see the range okay so you need to know these ranges and see them or else you're gonna have trouble trading because you're gonna think the market's just moving down but it's not it's in a range it's in a small range right here so you need to see the market continue to the downside and to see that you need to violate some levels to see the markets moving right so once you violate some levels then you'll start to see this Kijinsen start to move downwards and then you'll have some momentum to the downside okay I've been using the Williams percent R quite a bit and I'm gonna show you that being below that negative 80 level shows us that we still have strong downside momentum so we need to get outside of this box violate this level and continue to downside you see the market move lower and lower maybe we'll start looking for our levels where we're gonna look for a profit and what first levels we're gonna look at is like this right here so let's move it up a little because we wanna get right on this so we have this here we have this support here we have resistance here support here so maybe if we can get down with you have to be careful of this level overall I'd like to see the market get down so this level here is 71,492 but I like to see the market get all the way down to this level um, this will be the overall target when we look for about 70589 so that's what we're looking at on the euro pound so you had a Kumo breakout but you still need to see that momentum move so we had a Kumo breakout but it's Sunday so a lot of times a Kumo breakout on a Sunday is not going to be uh, really 
a strong breakout because you don't have the big guys in the market really because the bankers and everybody don't really start trading until Monday so you you don't have that volume that you need for to sustain a breakout so you may not see the breakout here continue so it's like all the institutional traders pretty much are starting to trade on Monday morning pretty much while the market just opened on Sunday evening um, you don't have that volume you need you won't see a lot of breakouts continue to the downside or the upside no matter where they break out so we might stay in this little range here and then we'll start to see what happens um, Monday okay and also guys you gotta look at that news look at the news for your peers make sure what's happening um, on the news days if you got any issues with news okay so that's euro pound I'm gonna move off of the euro pound and get to the euro Swiss franc let's go to the euro Swiss franc and that's gonna be on the daily time frame starting with now again this pair I don't trade a lot of these Swiss franc pairs especially after what you had these big violations here this big move here the previous month of um, in January when you had this all happen in January this big move here and then the markets trying to get back into um, structure again it took a while but it looks like it's it's our it's back in structure I mean because that was a massive move here a lot of things happened here <laughs> took out a lot of accounts and maybe some people made some money but again you could see this market it's in, in looking at the daily if you don't realize it guys you, you could see we're in a range here so the markets in a range pretty much and I'm not gonna put the wicks I'm just gonna put the open and closes here pretty much just to show you that we're in a range we need to violate some of these levels to see the market start moving if not you can bounce in between this range so I'm gonna leave it on the chart to show you but first of all you could see this daily candle opened up here and the way this is the market is here I can't really get a good feel for what the daily structure is the structure basically is we're in a range right here so you can see we have the crossover another crossover everything's pretty flat Tinkinson and Kijinson are too tight together again another area and another market that's not great for your um, Ichimoku trading if you go to the four hour you'll probably see a better market okay and what I do like here again you have a strong you have strong downside momentum after you get through that negative 80 level here with the um, Williams percent R so a violation of this level here so leads you to a four hour Kumo breakout which is going to be this level here with this four hour Kumo breakout lines up with some very good things here uh, which makes me believe that the support level may hold because we're pretty much at that range this range if you include the wicks would bring us down exactly to this level where the bottom of the Kumo cloud is and the bottom of your previous weeks what's this the bottom of the this is the top of the previous week no the bottom sorry this is the bottom of the previous week's low alright here's the top of the previous week's high previous week's low right here now this is strong support and resistance at this level because you have 10426 which also we're going to include that with the Kumo cloud and the range that's the bottom of that A lot of confluence there so you may not see this level violated and especially again like I said on a, a Sunday evening you may see this price um, pull back move up if it violates and goes up to the upside to the Kumo breakout you're pretty much going to be trading like a range here all right because you get a bounce here you're not really looking at the way Ichimoku is showing you you're looking at, at the support and resistance of this level here of this range so maybe a bounce at this level can take you to the upside back up to this level so look for a way to enter the market here I'm not going to tell you how to enter the market you figure out the way how to enter to the market at this level because this is the bottom of the range once you get an entry at this level then you can move up and maybe bounce it back up to this level so you could range trade here you have the top here bottom top bottom maybe we go back to the top now if we violate the bottom here and close below that level be careful of the um, breakout to the downside which could be a fade so it'll be a bear a bear trap get that bear trap and then market moves higher and goes back up to the top of the range a lot of times you'll see bear traps in ranges okay you could call this a bull trap because pretty much price went up made a new high then usually when on a bear trap you'll see price violate that previous high and then come back down a lot of people that are trading breakouts of the level are going to take this long they get taken out because they see this level get violated the market comes back down and continues to the downside all right but here it looks like we may hold support you can't really tell what's happening yet you still have three hours for this new candle to close but again like I said it's Sunday so I don't expect a lot of breakouts to be strong on Sunday um, more on Sunday evening the market just opening all right 
So that's the that's going to be the Euro Swiss franc, and we're going to move on. We got two more pairs I want to cover. I'm going to cover the next pair. It's going to be U.S. dollar CAD. So let's go to U.S. dollar CAD. Okay, U.S. dollar CAD on the daily time frame here, and we're inside the cloud here. We have a bullish uh, TK crossover, but we have a bearish fu uh, bullish future also. Our future is bright still. Now this is a bearish cloud right here. As you can see, I go by the colors. A lot of people tell you, oh, the color doesn't matter. But the color does matter to me because it lets me know if I have a bright future or a dark future. And I need to know which one I have based off of which way I'm trading. If I'm trading a long trade, I want to have a bright future. And if I'm trading a short trade, I want to have a dark future. Okay, and if I don't have that, if they're if they're mismatch sig mis mismatched signals, then it's not going to be a good uh, trade. You're not going to be following the Ichimoku, Ichimoku rules. Now we're inside this cloud here. It looks like the market moved up. Is this a pullback and then the market moved higher? Okay, it looks like this level here at the Tenkan Sen is finding resistance here. So there's going to be a few things. Looking at these rejections here lead me to believe that this is a bounce off of the Kijin Sen. And if we see market continue to the downside based off of the market structure, again, looking at the structure, which is giving me the idea of what the market may be doing. Now, we violated this bear factor. If we violate another bear factor, we're going to also have a Kumo breakout on the daily. And we'll see the market continue to the downside. If we see the market continue to the downside, and break that daily um, cloud I can look to the market to go down probably to this level that I'll look to take profit profit at this level at 119,567 so I want to see if this rejection level is true if this is gonna hold and it looks like you had your last two days rejecting that level okay so we're here now at this level so I'm gonna mark this on my chart First, I want to mark this top of this cloud here. I want to see that top of that cloud when I go to the four hour time frame. So that'll be a strong level for me. And I know the rejection is at this level here. So this is where the rejection is. So if I go to the four hour and I'm looking to go short basically based off of what I see this market doing. So this is the top of the cloud here so I know if price continues higher and violates this level here and this this daily cloud pretty much lines up with this flat cloud right here so I could just put that level there if we see a violation of this level then we know the markets moving to the upside alright but to surely see the market move to the downside you violate this level right here where this fractal is this 122.691 a violation to the downside of that level will lead me to believe that definitely gonna see the market move to the downside you have this previous week's low here which is gonna be support at 122.019 so be careful of that level but I think if we violate here I think we'll see the market continue down because you'll have the momentum probably to violate this level and you'll be in line with the market structure and then we'll just follow this trade all the way down to this level that I said before 119.567 and if you line that up better on the four hour we could keep it there you keep it there pretty much I even take it to 119.651 just to well, this level here watch this a little bit I think we could get down to that level so we need to see a violation here to make sure that this level we see after we're seeing these rejections of this level here which is 123.530 we've been seeing rejections of this level if we see the market close up above this level then I think we're we're gonna be seeing the market overall go back to the upside so that will eliminate our downside bias and I'm looking at this four hour everything looks bearish so I'm gonna look to enter the market after the break of um, or just here even here you're in between the Tinkinson and the Kijinson so a violation of the Tinkinson to the downside will even give you uh, an entry and a tighter stop loss okay but that's looking at the US dollar CAD I look I'm bearish on that right now based off of the things that I see starting off with the daily like I showed you the rejection of the last two days with these wicks alright those rejections also the support level the resistance level that I'm looking at my tank my uh, Tinkinson and then going to the four hour time frame and looking at what the four hours doing you can see the four hours in a small little consolidated uh, phase right here and bouncing off of the four hour Kijinson so we see all kind of bounces off of resistance levels so we haven't seen any violations yet and until we see a violation then we're going to continue with that bearish bias once we violate see it to move to the upside then we'll start looking for the opposite alright we want to make sure we know what the market structure is though before we jump on any trade alright so now we're going to look at one last pair guys and it's going to be the US dollar yen US dollar yen believe it or not hasn't been my best pair it's been probably the worst pair for me to trade and I just really don't understand um, I've been faked out so many times with the US dollar yen 
and you would think that it would probably be my best pair trading that with the um, Ichimoku system but nope it's not uh, my favorite pair is the euro yen but this US dollar yen is showing me some things here you could see again if we look at the market structure the market moved up pulled back this looks like a pullback but then again the last two days look like again some rejection of the key of your Tinkinson level here and we're trading between the daily and the um, for uh, the daily Tinkinson and the daily Kijinson so we want to get out of out of those levels we don't want to be trading in between those levels so I'm gonna mark this on my chart I want to see that daily Kijinson on the chart as I move to the lower time frame and that's going to be a support and resistance level and that pretty much lines up almost with this fractal level here so we're going to keep that level as our main level now the market may violate so let's put this on here just to show we could get a fractal bounce here or here this is the bottom all right so we see these levels here again you have strong resistance here i mean strong support here so i want to see a bounce at this level and then the market continue higher but I do see the rejections here okay but also I'm looking at the uh, Kijinson holding support so this market looks a little harder for me to judge until I see a violation basically of this level once we violate this fractal level on the daily time frame then it'll be in structure to move continue to downside all right now that's looking at the market structure but Ichimoku still telling me everything's bo uh, bullish to this time so go to the four hour time frame and Ichimoku is telling me everything is bearish at this moment okay so you got mixed signals here which one you want to look at you want to pay attention to so I want to see a violation of this level here before I really I'm fully committed 100% to the bearish move to the downside now earlier I had an entry order set for this level here below this because we but then the market went sideways on me and then now it's opening up a little bit below the entry that I had so I did, took that off the table so I didn't get into this trade but I'm still looking for this to the downside because still everything is bearish on this um, four hour time frame you can see we had a rejection of this Tinkinson here of this Kijinson here and you can see our TK crossover is bearish and you have Tinkinson below the Kijinson you have a dark cloud and pretty much the market right now is in a I call this a little tight range consolidation once we see the market continue to the downside so basically if you violate this level up here and you close above that level then I think the market's going to continue higher but a violation most definitely of this level because the market could come down and find support here so we want to see a violation of this level pretty much and then we will know that this market well we'll have it in our mind that this market is gonna continue to the downside we never know anything because the market could all of a sudden change its mind and do something different alright but yeah we still have some downside momentum still showing uh, but we're now inside that gray area here where you can see what the Williams percent are I like to see that below that negative 80 to continue that downside momentum so if we start to move downwards and we get a violation of these levels and get down to this level you will see that strength build up and then maybe we could break get a break of that level but now you're not gonna probably probably see that uh, anytime soon until you get uh, the market you know getting the bigger institutional traders trading pretty much you're gonna see a lot of volatility here until we can get some volume to get this market to move the way we want it to move but guys that's it pretty much that's me trading the Ichimoku system and what I see those are the pretty pretty much the basic trades that I'm looking at right now for this week I have what I show you about seven pairs that I'm really looking at some very good trades on so we'll see which one holds true and which one gives us the best opportunity I like to eliminate trades based off of the um, number one the probability and then the risk and then am I within my two percent after I put all that together I pretty much stay in that in that area I don't like to be too much outside of that two percent capital breaking that two percent capital um, of uh, my trades now a lot of people will debate that and say well you can't make no money doing that but maybe at first it's hard to make money but you can now there are times when I go outside of that rule but really you got to stick to that rule if you want to be profitable and be successful if I'm outside of that rule you may see me at 3% but depending on on your account your account size you're gonna feel like that's gonna take you forever but you know what that's gonna keep you in the game longer now there's a lot of people that will debate that but I'm just going by what I see and what I know and what I've been trading and doing for for the past um, since basically um, 2000 this is what I've been doing this is how I trade so that's all I wanted to show you guys and hopefully it helped you guys hopefully I'm still being a blessing to somebody out there hopefully I'm passing along something that you can use and helps you to um, better your trading 
So guys, until next time, hope this helped you and God bless. Have a great week of trading. So long.